Hello, my name is Franz. Today I will show you how to connect tracking information to the spatial offset of the time clone, for example, to repair a static camera here. So here we see a 2K shot where I have blanked out some material which uh, we don't need to focus on. So the focus actually sits here on this static camera gate here. So when we play through it, in Diamond we would have several solutions to fix that really. So it could be an X in paint filter or now our new deep in paint filter, uh, which works quite well or very well to fix that and it's easier to fix that but today I want to show you how to use time clone uh, to fix that um, with the temporal animated offsets okay so first we would need to fix the first frame somehow and I'm going to use for the first frame also X in paint and for that I want to create a a tool track underneath my filter track. So I go to add track tool track below. Uh, I go there and say, okay, I want to have an X in paint. Here is my brush and I mark this and the X in paint. I press the now control to add this to the mask. Okay, uh, I'm not working as precisely as I should, but don't worry. So we fill this up. So the X in paint does a spatial interpolation on this very frame, uh, but still the problem is on the rest of the frames, yeah? So what we could use now is, um, okay. a time clone and what we want to do is we want to have an absolute frame and it automatically suggests the frame before so this frame would be my absolute clone source so it's always the same frame and I would not rather clone from source from the input I want to clone from the output to have it on every frame so I changed the track to output and now I can actually use a, a brush to clone to clone this information from over there yeah so disable the mask so I cloned this and I can render this now over the time so when we play this you see the background is moving slightly and of course this time clone freezes that thing over the time and that's what you could do with the normal time clone anyway to to copy one thing over the sequence but now we want to animate the spatial offset that this fits to the sequence yeah so how to do that i go there and Uh, I have a, a smaller screen now than before, so <laughs> this is, and I have to add a track, a tracker track, uh, track points, here it is, and I go to the first frame. And what I also want to do is that I lock this keyframe. So my tracking would always go from the first, from any frame to the first frame. So I'm creating a tracker from any frame to my keyframe. And I will track the telephone here. So it creates tracking points. I can track them. So it's tracking the points over time. And when I go through, I can see the tracking. Tracking looks good. And now I go to my time clone and here I have a, a symbol T and I can connect now to the tracker T. So again, symbol T, tracker T. Now the tracking information is connected to my spatial offset. You see, I have now an animation of my spatial offset. So I render this. 
And when we look at this now, the thing is moving accordingly to the picture. So when I do a side by side on that, we have a fix over there. Of course, since we were always cloning the same, the very same frame over the time, this is kind of static. Yeah. And how we would improve that. I go into my post enhance and would do a regrain and I have a grain template. The best is that you create a tame grain template first. So I have a grain template for this and you can put in a certain grain level. And now I'm regraining this part of the clone so that it looks more natural into the sequence. Yeah. Okay, so, and please be aware this was uh, just a part of a 2K full, uh, thing, so the hair is fixed perfectly with this. So, thanks for listening to this tutorial, which explains how to use a tracker to connect it to the spatial offset of a clone. So, of the time clone in this case, it would work with other spatial offsets as well, if needed. Thank you.